Number 10. Apocephalus Borealis Zombie movies may actually have it all wrong. The real concern isn't a zombifying virus giving dead people the brain munchies. The real concern is actually parasites, nature's real zombies. A great example of this is the parasitoid forehead fly, also known as a humpbacked fly or scuttlefly. He attacks both honey and bumblebees and even takes on wasps. The zombie fly has a Nearctic distribution and has been retrieved from host insects in the western and eastern regions of the United States and Canada. While the animal kingdom is full of animals that live to fight, this one takes on a tactic that is pretty unnerving. The Borealis doesn't just attack their victims, they alter their behavior to their own means. This turns the bees into zombies. Get it? Anyway, they alter their behavior so that they can make the bees into the perfect womb for their larva. Gross, right? This can result in the bees stumbling around as if they are drunk in the circle due to the disorientation caused by the infection. They lay the eggs in the abdomen of the bee, and when the larva hatch, they feed on the flight muscles that the bees have. Once they are mature and ready to enter the real world without their bee host, they break through the bee's head and thorax like some kind of insane bee hulk. This can sometimes end in the bees being decapitated as a final injury to the poor insect before they carry on with their lives of the vicious zombie cycle. This is pretty disturbing and an epidemic that has worried bee enthusiasts as it's seen as a disease. Number 9. Poor Pillbug Pillbugs Often called roly-polies or potato bugs are cute and innocent members of the insect world, right? Sure, as long as they haven't been taken over by a nefarious Ancetocephalon parasite, this parasite is a tiny worm called Plagiorhynchus cylindraceus, and it lives in the intestinal tract of starlings, which is a type of bird. The parasite gets pooped out right into the waiting jaws of the pill bug, Pill bugs love bird poop, by the way. Think about that the next time you let a roly-poly crawl all over you. Once inside the body of the oblivious roly-poly, the parasite takes over its brain and urges the zombified bug to do crazy things, such as draw attention to itself, much to the delight of its predator, the starling. The parasite completes its journey and then runs off to find another pill bug upon which to practice mind control. Circle of life. Number eight. Bird Tapeworm We've all heard of tapeworm. Maybe you guys have even suffered from it or even know someone that has. If you have, tell us your story in the comments below and we'll be sure to send you guys a gift basket. Not really, but super sorry about that. All parasites, and especially tapeworms, are pretty disgusting, but they're also a little fascinating. Uniquely armored and specially adapted, they inhabit a menagerie of animals, including us. The specific type that can affect birds are called cestodes, and they mainly target chickens and turkeys. While they don't alter their mood like the Borealis, they latch onto the bowels of the infected victim, bury their heads in, and eat the bird's bodily fluids. Yikes! To add insult to injury, they then lay their eggs within the bowel. The shape of the tapeworm is similar to a ribbon in that it wraps around the bowel and has eggs attached to the lining of it, like a lacy little addition. We're just trying to make it not sound as gross as it does. Once the eggs are mature, they release from the tapeworm and are passed through the digestive system and into the bird's poo. This cycle continues as the eggs are then eaten by insects, and then the insects are eaten by the birds. It's like the circle of life, only a lot more disgusting. But while the bird is carrying the eggs, there are hosts to them and pretty much zombie chickens. Number 7. Baculovirus If you're a fan of zombies and zombie culture in general, then you'll know that a lot of the origin stories of these zombies are because of a virus or an infection of some sort. This then gets passed through on a bite or something similar, meaning that who was ever on the receiving end of the bite is now also infected with the virus too. Last year there was a spread of infected larvae who are all infected with a virus that spread through Britain. The larvae specifically targeted caterpillars. While we all recognize caterpillars as the sometimes fluffy, sometimes big, sometimes small bugs that eventually go into cocoons and emerge as beautiful butterflies. After the infection, you wouldn't be able to recognize them at all. And they definitely don't make it to the butterfly stage after this virus takes a hold of them. Their corpses are left as nothing more than a small liquefied globule of pus. So what is the microorganism they are infected with? It's called baculovirus. 
The symptoms of this prompt their host to eat excessively and climb too close to the light. Why is this a bad thing? The heat from the sun's rays prompt the caterpillar to spontaneously combust and explode. Intense, right? This means that the exploded parts of the infected caterpillar body then spread out onto the rest of the bugs below, and then they become infected too. Rinse and repeat, and you've got a whole species that are infected with the same disease. However, it's not all doom and gloom and exploding caterpillars, because scientists have found that there could be a plus side to this virus and what it does. This can keep down the caterpillar population and the moth population too, meaning that vegetation is ripe as they're not eating it. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome! If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Hyperparasitoid. Have you guys got the heebie-jeebies yet? If you're not feeling squeamish yet, then you've done a good job. But we'll see if you can carry on feeling fine throughout the rest of the video. Let us know in the comments if you're squirming. A parasitoid is an organism that lives closely with their host. They normally feed off of it or generally just change the way that the host lives or acts. This means taking away any control that they have over their body or actions. Hyperparasites are ones that control their host completely, similarly to the way pre-zombie victims can't control their anger or their violent impulses and end up viciously attacking their friends and family. They have a predisposition to feed on herbivores because they eat plants, which enable the parasites to thrive better. While zombie films have become more and more popular, it's not just that genre that was inspired by their biology and their way of life. Many science fiction authors and scriptwriters wrote about parasitic aliens that infected their human hosts and then came out of them by bursting through their body. Remember that scene in Alien? That's literally what these hyperparasites do. Number 5. Central American Acacia Tree Insects have it rough on this side of nature. The stinging ant, Pseudomurix ferruginius, lives in a close relationship with the Central American Acacia Tree. This is because the tree provides a sweet nectar for the ants while they occupy the hollowed out thorns. This isn't just a selfish relationship for the ant, as the ant also protects the tree from weeds and other animals. However, there's something that the ant can't see at first. The nectar that the ant is attracted to has an addictive substance in it. Not so bad, right? It's like MSG in human food. We want more of it because it tastes so good. However, this nectar makes it so that the ant can't digest any other food. This is because the nectar makes them lose their inner vase, which is an enzyme that breaks down sugars. So it means that the only thing that they can live on and eat is the nectar, which means that they have to be there for the tree to protect it. Sounds like a pretty toxic relationship to me. Number 4. Zatipida percontatoria. You guys get a cookie or 10 if you can pronounce this. However, while many types of zombie animals have been well researched and understood from how they control their host to their motives, this one is a bit of a mystery. This one specifically goes after web-building spiders. The Zatipida percantatoria is an ectoparasitoid wasp of theridid spiders. The parasitoids in their larva state attach to the spider abdomen and lay wasp eggs within them. The eggs only spend just under seven days as an egg, and once that's over, they detach from the abdomen and break through the spider's skin to be fully birthed. The reason why they chose this type of spider is that during the incubation period, their bodies reach the perfect temperature for the egg to hatch and to thrive in the right standards and specifications for this stage of life. Doesn't make it any less creepy though. Number 3. Cockroach Zombie Day of the Dead, a swift stab to the brain turns an innocent into the victim of a barbarous assault and kidnapping. Except this time, that defenseless victim is one of the world's least favorite insects, the cockroach. And the villain is again... The Wasp. The jewel wasp, or emerald cockroach wasp, Ampulex compressa, is known for its unusual reproductive behavior, which involves stinging a cockroach in its thorax, the middle section of its body, and using it as a host for its larva. The wasp venom renders the cockroach unable to move. After the cockroach is dragged into the wasp's lair, it continues to live. Unknowingly, its abdomen is being implanted with the wasp's eggs. Then later, the larvae hatch and eat the still living but incapacitated cockroach from the inside out. Ew! And about a month later, a mature wasp flees from the scene of the crime, leaving behind a rotting carcass. Number 2. Cricket Virus We've talked a lot about the viruses in this video, but a lot of them have been more like diseases that are transmitted through a bite or scratch or something more zombie-like. 
However, this one is one of the weirdest ones that we've ever heard of. It's a sexually transmitted disease. Yup, you heard us right. We know that sex is something that happens between a lot of animals in the animal kingdom, but sexually transmitted diseases seem to be all too human. This virus is called the 2V6CRLV, which is a bit of a mouthful. It also is specific to crickets. This is one of the most twisted and slickest virus Mother Nature has ever given us. It's similar to the other zombie originations that we have in this video in that it affects the behavior of the crickets. It will become more sexually active upon being infected, which means that it will spread more of the virus from one host to another. Some viruses choose to explode their host, some spread it through sex. However, this would be fruitless because the virus means that they become sterile, whether they're male or female. We know as a whole that animals are built with the need to mate, and without being able to do this, the cricket would be compelled to mate until they die. Like with most insects, the mating ritual of crickets seems bizarre to say the least. The male and female first initialize courtship by brushing each other's antenna, no tongue. The female then mounts the male, brushing his abdomen. When she does this, it secretes sperm. The sperm is then pumped into the female for about 30 minutes, which will go on to fertilize her hundred or so eggs. But for the crickets infected with 2v6 CRLV, this mating ritual doesn't really go according to plan. The infected male or female go on with their business as usual, only there won't be any offspring left in the process. The virus essentially sterilizes the crickets while encouraging mating at the same time. Soon after, following mating, the female will become swollen and blue, unable to lay eggs. Basically, this virus makes the cricket want to mate with as many crickets as they can without realizing their seeds are being spread. They don't realize they're infected, however, aside from their increased sexual need, they don't have any other symptoms. The weirdest and most pointless STD ever. Number 1. Pseudactian Littoralis Finally, we have the Pseudodactian Littoralis. This is a parasitoid of the red imported fire ant. If you really want to get clued up on your Latin names of all of these bugs, then this is called the Solenopsis Invicta. The parasitoid is the largest of the species, and it specializes in attacking fire ants to parasitize them. It normally attacks during dawn and dusk, as this is the best time for it to do so. But how does it attack? Well, it decapitates its victims, straight up. This is probably one of the most violent zombie conversions that we've seen in this video. What's worse is that they then pupate in the empty head capsule to add insult to injury. How gross is that? Poor fire ants. At least it's a little quicker than the rest of the ways that the hosts die as they normally live to see their actions being taken over by the parasites. Once they've managed to incubate in the conditions, they then emerge towards a quote window screen which they layer over the open socket from the decapitated head. They're drawn to this because of the light that shines through the gap. Thanks for watching! What do you think of these zombie viruses and parasites? Have you heard of any of them before? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already! I'll see you next time on the Board Badger!